Hi everyone, Kim Madison here, Australian children's author. And in this video, I'm going to provide a bit of background to the Tweeting Galar Children's Cyber Safety Book Series. The series is made up of four books. The Tweeting Galar, The Surfing Penguin, The Little Possum Who Looked Up, and The Zooming Owl. Now, each of these books um, are illustrated short stories aimed at children ages um, seven through to 12, uh, except for The Little Possum, which is a traditional picture book aimed at children ages three three to seven. And the purpose of these books is to provide um, a fun, easy and accessible way to teach children about what it's like to be an empowered digital citizen and how to grow up safe, happy and healthy in a world full of technology. So each story addresses a different cyber safety or technology issue, and it presents a character um, who's experiencing one of these issues of growing up in a digital world. The stories all end with um, an important message um, about technology, as well as reflection questions to help guide discussion. In the Tweeting Galar book, uh, the first story with uh, Gabo the Galar teaches kids about thinking before they post and uh, introduces the concept of digital footprints. The second story, uh, the sensational saga of the bumbling bilby, introduces kids to the idea of photo permissions um, or asking for permission before sharing photos of others, um, as well as introducing the idea or the concept of cyberbullying. The third story, the Strange Story of the Singing Clownfish introduces kids to the risks of online stranger danger and only talking to people online who they know in real life. And the fourth story, The Curious Case of the Overly Playful Platypus, talks about screen time balance and the importance of having uh, some boundaries in place to prevent kids from overuse, um, overuse of their devices which can lead to obviously issues such as lack of sleep. In The Surfing Penguin, um, the stories follow the same structure um, in that there are four short stories as well. In the first one, um, The Scary Plight of the Surfing Penguin, Pablo and Polo um, end up a little bit traumatised after stumbling across an age-inappropriate movie online. Um, and the message there is the importance of um, having filters in place on your different apps and websites, uh, but also recognising the warning signs that your body gives you when you're um, feeling unsafe. The second story in this uh, book is The Courageous Quest of the Smiling Quokka. Now, this story focuses specifically on the issue of cyberbullying. Um, but also on what it means to be an upstander. Um, so it goes through what it feels like um, when someone, you know, receives really hurtful uh, comments online, but then also what we can do um, as bystanders um, in becoming an upstander and actually, you know, helping people when, when you see something occur online that's unkind. The next story is the troublesome episode of the trolling echidna. Um, and this is almost the reverse to the previous story, um, because in this story, we've got Edgar, the echidna, and he's online and he thinks um, that it would be funny to, to troll everyone and to be a bit mean in the game, um, you know, thinking that it's pretty funny. Only he then has to learn that actually, you know, on the other side of this, this screen is, is a real, well, not real humans, it's real animals and real echidnas. Um, but they have real feelings um, and he needs to keep that in mind when he's um, engaging and playing with them. And then uh, the final story here, the Galar's close encounter with the creeping kestrel. Uh, this reintroduces Gabo, the Galar, from the first story, along with his sister. And his sister is so excited about camp um, that they're on that she posts all these photos online that include some geolocation tags. Uh, pinpointing their exact location. So, you know, along come the kestrels and they steal all the birds' food. The Galahs um, are really upset and Gabo is so angry at his sister 
um, that she runs off. Um, you know, he realizes that, look, we've all made mistakes, you know, throwback to his foolish selfie um, in the first book. Um, and he needs to, you know, just be a bit more understanding. Um, she worries that they're now lost in the bush. And that's where he's able to explain to her that, hey, geolocation um, actually can be quite a positive thing at times. And he opens up his map app um, and he's able to guide them safely back to the campsite. It's a really good story about um, the pros and cons of technology. So it really come through strongly in that story. Then we've got the little possum who looked up. As I said at the start, this is a slightly different structure in that it's just the one story, um, not four short ones. And it's a traditional illustrated rhyming picture book. And it follows the story of Pebbles the Possum. She's um, dying to build a rocket ship and go visit the moon. So she tinkers and tailors and she cuts with care. She tries and she tests, but she's not quite there. And she realizes she needs some help from her family members. Only when she goes around asking everyone from help for help, she finds that they're all a little bit too busy. For instance, we've got Granny Sybil nestled in her nook, uh, flicking and clicking and flicking through her ebook, and she doesn't look up. She finds Uncle Brush, but he's following the cricket, tuning in and cheering as his team takes a wicket, not looking up, and so on and so forth. She finally gets really frustrated and she says, look, everyone, you're being ridiculous. We need to balance this screen time. Um, and she says, enough clickety clicks and tappity taps and no more browsing and buzzing and snapping of apps. We need to look up. And so the family agrees that whilst technology offers a lot of benefits, um, recreational, um, work, ordering food, um, they do need to balance it. And so they all put their screens down for an hour every day and they spend time together and they help Pebbles build that rocket ship and fly off to the moon. Um, and so I love how this one shows all the different uses of technology, um, the positives of it all, but also, of course, that need for balance. And then we have the last book in the series um, to date, um, which is called The Zooming Hour. And this is a special once-off edition uh, which is just the one short story and it's all about starting online learning and so this story was um, I wrote this story back in 2020 and it reintroduces all the characters from the Tweeting Galah and the Surfing Penguin and they're currently transitioning to online learning um, because of um, a termite attack on their wooden school and they're actually looking to video conference with um, an owl who's an astronaut, only they encounter some technical difficulties. And so as a class, they need to work through those technical difficulties in order to reestablish that connection. Um, and so it's a great story um, for any, you know, any class out there that has, um, has to do online learning themselves or who's looking to teach um, a bit about that you know, that use of technology um, and how to troubleshoot. So, so that's it. That's the four stories today in the Tweeting Glass series. As you can see, they address a whole range of issues from online stranger danger to cyberbullying to screen time balance. And something that I've really tried to um, make clear through this series is the, um, the, the benefits of technology as well as the risks and acknowledging that technology is part of our lives. We use it for everything, for fun, for learning, for work, um, but it's really important that our children understand how to do all of that in safe and healthy ways. And that's the message within each of the stories. Each story ends with, a, with reflection, reflection questions to help um, guide conversation with kids about the issues. Um, and in that way, they, they work as really wonderful classroom resources, um, as well as a book for families to read and enjoy together. Thanks for watching. I was really hoping to keep that summary to like three to five minutes. Um, I can see on my phone that I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 10. So if you've gotten to the end, thank you so much. I love um, and really appreciate the interest that you've shown in this series. 
If you have gotten to the end, can you drop me an emoji in the comments below? Drop me a penguin emoji so I know that you've listened to the end. Um, and thank you so much.